Welcome back to .NET Rocks. This is Carl Franklin. And this is Richard Campbell. And we're here with the, uh, the what do we call these guys? The .NET brothers? The yeah, ASP.NET the, brothers? The troublemakers. Troublemakers. That's right. .NET yeah. troublemakers. That's who Damian, they are. Damian, David. Yeah. We're going to be talking to them in just a few minutes. But yep. first, we have some business to take care of. It's called Better Know Framework. Awesome. <laughs> All right, man, what do you got? This was really cool. James Montemagno told me about this one as well. It's Skia Sharp. And Skia, S-K-I-A, is a graphics library from Google. And essentially, Skia Sharp is an implementation of this in Xamarin. Oh, nice. And it's cross-platform. So think of it like system.drawing, but cross-platform. Weird. How cool is that? So, you know, you, you basically have the same API that runs on Android, iOS, TVOS, Mac, Windows, Windows So UWP. it's just abstracting how all these different platforms draw to the screen. Exactly. I love it, love it, and love it. And you just have one API to draw everywhere now. So there you go. That's very clever. Skia Sharp. Thanks, no James. Yep. You're awesome. Yeah. Who's talking to us, man? That's an excellent question. I wish I knew the answer to that. Wait, no, I do. I grabbed a comment off a of show, 1312, the one we did back in June of 2016, when we talked to one David Fowler and Damien Edwards. Was that Damien Edwards and David Fowler? I don't we know. were talking about .NET Core and Kestrel back mm. in the day. Got a few comments on that show, actually. Yep. This particular one, now a year old, is from Ivan, who says, that was a great show. I have to honestly say that short conversation on how the date-time object was a big culprit mm. in performance issues was very interesting. Mm. If .NET is going to reach huge performance milestones, such as surpassing Netty, I wonder what else will have to be getting replacements. Will the .NET framework have a lot of 2.0 libraries that are alternatives to the originals but have performance benefits? If you look at the industry, many people flock to what is easy to use but is also fast. Mm. And if .NET can get that fast, I can see many non-.NET devs moving towards this and recommending .NET as a viable, scalable solution. Who would do that? I can't imagine. I can't imagine. Should Microsoft come up with a new date time object and retire the old? Or should we just allow it follow the JSON.NET dependency and use Node Time as a core dependency of the framework? Hmm. What other objects should Microsoft retire in order to gain performance? Great job to all the Microsoft folks on the performance so far and keep pushing. Lex makes MVC and Web API that fast too. Yeah. Ivan? I'm just going to tell you you're going to get a mug, and then we're going to go harass the boys about this. So yep. thanks so much for your uh, comment. A .NET Rocks mug is on its way to you. And if you'd like a .NET Rocks mug, write a comment on the website at .NET Rocks.com or via any of our social media, because we publish every show to Google Plus and Facebook. And if you comment there and we read it on the show, we'll send you a mug. And definitely follow us on Twitter. I'm at Carl Franklin. He's at Rich Campbell. Send us a tweet. We draw on them. I guess. <laughs> I don't know. We, we, we draw on vast resources of non-humor to do this show. Um, I was going to say we manipulate their canvas objects to create beautiful drawings. That's pretty good. Okay. I like that. I'm doing the best I can. All right. I'm glad you help out there I'm, sometimes I'm when to, I fall down. Trying to That's be a better man. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> so, guys, I mean, it was almost a year ago on the nose that we did that show, 1312. Yeah. Right. And yeah. then, that was a big push about performance. It yeah. was, yeah. yeah. How'd it go a year later? Have we beat, Nettie, those have we were pretty Nettie? high bars. <laughs> have we beat Nettie yet? No. 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 no we are, we're competitive. Okay, so if you look at Tech and Power, which is what we talked about a lot last year. Yes, um, we did. There's been a round since then. I think we dropped out of the top 10 for plain text, mostly because some other stuff, young up-and-comers, New framework came on top. have appeared, yeah. which is good. You know, it's a good space. It just shows that it's still a growing, yeah. evolving yeah. ecosystem. We're all pushing each other, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. But you know, the reality is of the, of the well-established, sort of well-known names... There's only a couple at the top up there, yeah. and Netty is one of them, and right. Rare one of them, and there's a couple of Go frameworks and stuff, which is good. I will say that MVC, as a full-stack framework, is by far, I think, the, the highest the well-known framework on there. There's two others that are marked as full frameworks on top that I don't think are very well-known. Yep. Interesting. But MVC, on top of ASP.NET Core, as, as you know, it's a complete full stack. You know, right. it does all types of stuff. Um, when it does plain text, is is pretty impressive. I think it was doing eight hundred thousand or something in the last on the, their wow. hardware. Wow. those are yeah. crazy numbers. Uh, which is crazy, you know. And, and so, to the comment that was made before, you know, MVC is pretty good now. I mean, yeah. we're a lot at least when you're doing plain text. And obviously, as soon as you start laying other stuff on, we've still got work to do. And mm -hmm. JSON is kind of the thing that yeah. we're looking at mostly right now. Like with plain text, we're competitive. Turning, talking about the benchmarks, JSON is the next one that we need to do some work on, and then all the way to the other end of the scale is what they call Fortunes, which does database access and HTML rendering. But, and that's where we're, you know. But there is an, an entire V-team in, in Microsoft now trying to win Tech Empower. So we kind of have a bunch of big brains working on these problems. So 
It's the JIT team, the CoreCLR team, the SPNet team that have come together to form a V team. We wow. called it the Cloud Skill Runtime Team. Wow. And we're working on new primitives for for making our stuff faster, right? So and there's, and there's an entire like thing called CacheNetty. And every <laughs> and every few weeks we meet and talk about why it's faster. We, we have like guys looking at assembly language, tr tr trying to figure out if the Java JIT is better than our JIT, and doing like very like raw comparisons. So it's actually been it's it's caused pretty good behavior like all around for our, our It's teams. enlightening, right? right? Like, it, it, it forces us to really look at stuff. Yeah, it's like, why, why is Java, like, faster if, like, it's the same kind of legitimate code, sure, GC code? Yeah. same why sort of runtimes, right? yeah. yeah. I like the fact that you guys are operating in an open environment and everybody can see and you're, you're just trying to make the best product you possibly can. Yeah. I, I love that. I love that. You know that. what it reminds me of? It reminds me of back in the, like, the IE Chrome eras with the V8 engine, the Chakra engine, yeah. and, and they went back and forth and back and forth, fast, 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 mm -hmm. fast. Like, we all benefited from that. Yeah. Absolutely. That we just made more and more capability and just kept going faster. Yep. Yeah, and yeah. this yeah. latest version of yeah. .NET Core, there was a great blog post by uh, Stephen, Stephen Tobe, Tobe. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, highlighting a bunch of the low-level performance improvements in .NET Core 2, a lot of mm. which were co committed by the community, which is fantastic. Wow. But like things like list got like crazily faster. List.remove is much faster. It's like than insanely faster. <laughs> <fast. laughs> but all types of stuff, like some of the date, the date time yeah, thing that was talked going about. Going back to Ivan's comment. Yeah, specifically, yeah. I think the, the format type that we were using for serving the web server stuff was particularly slow. A lot of that has been improved. But let me be clear. You don't have to worry about date time being slow generally in your app, but when right. you're trying to beat a benchmark where you're doing millions of requests per second, yes. you don't want to format the current date. It's a bit artificial. No, it's yeah. a bit artificial, yeah. right? So yeah. I wouldn't worry too much about that. But people have improved it anyway, and there's crazy, crazy improvements in random areas across like all the across the stack. Yeah. Because Someone rewrote looking. the thread pool thing, mm. apparently. Everyone, like, has their, everyone has their own thing. Has their thing that they're interested they're in. Right? Like, I like begins. I want begins to be fast. I'm using begins in my software. Someone made a noom dot like two string fast. Ben Adams. Ben Adams. <laughs> like the great <laughs> Ben Adams. 300% faster. faster. Like, wow. Yeah. Enum dot two string. And like, and then it wasn't just perf. It's all like a throughput. It's also uh, like allocation. So the memory, memory. use is much smaller. So you get less GCs. And some right. of the bench marks shown in that blog post are just like mind-bogglingly better. Like they went from hundreds of garbage collections to none. To none. Like wow. literally zero because they don't allocate anymore. They don't actually allocate They don't anymore. actually allocate. That's crazy. Anyone can go in there and pick something and try to improve it and, yes. and yeah. that's basically what's happening, right? That's basically yeah. what's happening. Yep. And if it's, you know, you write good code and the, the team's very happy to help people when they send PRs yeah. and work through them, they'll get accepted. That's so. interesting. Wow. And Ivan was hinting at something maybe a little frightening, this idea that we would replace a typical daytime object with something else that may be simpler or function differently just because of performance. But I see no evidence that that's the so case. So not of that type of level, but right. I will say that's happened in .NET before. Like the right. Socket API introduced an entirely different way of doing socket handling specifically to get better performance because mm -hmm. the design of the existing one wasn't really conducive yep. to doing low allocation socket sending and receiving. So they invented socket event args. It was around the WCF time, I yep. think. Specifically so you could pull objects that you could reuse. Now they didn't do that part for you. <laughs> yeah. They didn't do the hard part, which right, is right. the pooling part and reuse and yeah. buffering and da, da, da. But they gave you the types. Said, okay, yeah, you could fool yourself. if you're willing and right. so skilled, you could go off and do that. Right, um, right. So that yep. has happened before. There have been cases where the design is just such that, you know what? You really can't make this fast. We have to tweak it and give you an alternate design. Well, and you but I can't think of any others. No, that's nah. the big one that stands out. Well, I figured you'd know all about WebSockets being the signal R guys. Like, honestly. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm, you kind yeah. of put your, t put your time <laughs> in down there. <laughs> yeah. We did. Yeah. 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 And we're doing it again. So We are doing it. it again. Signal is being rewritten. Really? No for yeah. .NET Core, yeah. We're rewriting from the, from the ground up. So. Okay. Oh, right. Did it need a rewrite? Yeah. It did. It did. I mean, yeah. two couple of reasons. Obviously, ASP.NET Core has different primitives, primitives. and intrinsics and things right. that we need to write on top of that. Also, we learn a lot in two versions of SignalR about trying to solve all these problems that, frankly, we shouldn't have tried to solve. Um, that just ended up being <laughs> bug farms. Yeah. And the, you know, false promises, which is not a good thing to make as a uh, framework developer. And so... Oh, yeah. In some ways, there are less things that we're doing, but we've opened up the framework to make it easier for you to do it as an app developer, where some of this logic really should be in the app level, not yeah. the framework level. Yeah. Um, we learn a ton of stuff from, from SignalR and people, and people having it in production in, in general. Yeah. Doing it at scale is super, super hard. Yeah. So we kind of have data back on, on what we support out of the box and guarantee um, to make it easier to, to develop in, in the new version. In the first one, we, we said, you know, if you, if you were scaled out, you will never miss a message like across the entire form. Never. <laughs> turns out, <laughs> <laughs> turns out, um, uh -oh. that's super hard. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Wow. Like say a Sith only, only a Sith speaks in absolute. Yeah. Yeah. Never yeah, exactly. is a tough term. <laughs> I've seen Signal R just sort of time out and yep. not not tell you, and it's like oh, that's networking. That's, oh, oh yeah. and that's just networking. We right? were yeah. like, you know, will we try for like thirty seconds? Because that's good enough. 
Right. Like someone's like, I want to retry forever. And I'm like, well, we kind of Forever can't. is kind of a long time. <laughs> it is yeah. kind of a long time. <laughs> Do you want to keep all the state on the server too? And it's like, yeah, across your farm? Yeah, wow. no. No, no. We're not yeah. going to do That's that. That's super hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and the other thing is we, we're, the platform underneath it now, we've built this new thing called ASP.NET called Sockets, which is we're intending to be kind of the, the non-HTTP programming model for ASP.NET Core. Right. Which uh -huh. might sound... Odd, because it's like we've always yeah. been HTTP, but like right. in the, the world of server programming today, obviously we don't just talk HTTP. We, sure. we never always just talked HTTP, but with the advent of IoT and you know queuing protocols and etc. Cetera, etc., cetera, WCF is not going to be on .NET Core. It's, nope. been, it's pretty clear. So we need a nice new server programming model, but we want to keep all the intrinsics and patterns that we have in ASP.NET Core. So we want some DI, of the you know, DI logging, and configuration, and middleware pipeline type pipeline. things. So is that different from uh, SignalR? Yeah, yeah, it's underneath SignalR. Oh, okay. So SignalR used to have this layer called Persistent Connection, and then yep. Hubs was on top. Yeah. So now we just have Hubs and SignalR, and it's okay. built on top of this new thing called Sockets. Okay. ASP.NET Sockets. And that's sort of like a, a WebSocket implementation, if you think about it's it, not, right? It is, it's, it's, except it's yeah. not even WebSockets. It's, it's basically a connection abstraction. But so I can think of it like that. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. bytes in, bytes out. But you could plug TCP yeah. or... Quick or whatever else comes on board at some email. point. Email. I'm sorry. <laughs> email. You can totally, carry a, carry you a can pigeon. Totally do that. Just because just you can doesn't yeah. mean you should. That's right. You <laughs> totally should. That could be a thing. And you transport. <laughs> well, you know, you think about WCF, its original claim to flame was all these transports and all we used was TCP IP, you know, for the most part. Except that all, so, always only spoke SOAP. Yeah. So well, as long as you wanted to speak that. SOAP, you were fine. No. Exactly. Yeah. So and we have kind of like that with no soap at all, and just a pass through bytes from the actual transport directly. So it's sort of soapless then. It's soap. It's dirty. <laughs> it's, it's, dirty. Dirty. it's dirty. It's dirty. Dirty sockets. It's dirty. Dirty, 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 sockets. dirty sockets. I like a few dirty sockets. Can we call That's it dirty sockets? That's <laughs> pretty bad. <laughs> Can we ship that? No soap already required. Gone there, but are we thinking like ultra lightweight yes. IoT devices where yes. even HTTP represents too much ceremony? Yeah. Yes. So like things like AMQP or MQTT. MQTT is the big protocol yeah. for IoT. So I don't know how far we go. Like like I've said Zigbee a couple of times and people kind of screw their face up and look at me and say, no one uses Zigbee. I was like, well, my light switches use Zigbee. Yeah, yeah. But it's not really a client server technology as it is much more of a mesh type well, thing. And now but you're like, sort of getting to the reality, which is we could do with a better peer-to-peer -peer protocol. Yeah. Could, yeah. You know, that's not a, and that's not a simple problem. It's like I don't want to check in anyone in place. I just want to reach to a given thing. Mm -hmm. I want to pass my message and I want to go away. Yeah, mm -hmm. That would be awesome, actually. So you're going to yeah. solve that for me, we right? We should figure it out. We yeah. should figure that out. Put it on my list. But we're Tuesday. starting with this first. Yeah, put it on my list. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then yeah, we'll yeah. add that. Tuesday, we'll do that. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> right. Oh, wait a minute. Today is Tuesday. If you're listening to this on the day it came out. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably Next a Tuesday. Tuesday. Next, Next Tuesday. Yeah, one yeah. of those Tuesdays. One of those. So what else is new? What, what are you guys working on besides uh, Perf? And, and so 2.0 is kind of, we're shutting down 2.0 right now. We did a preview, came out at Build this year. Right, so right. So .NET Core 2, ASP.NET Core 2, .NET Standard 2 is yeah. all part of the same so release. So feature complete, just making sure everything works right? Pretty much. Like we're, okay. uh, they're, they're kind of doing that right now. They're shutting down Preview 2 right now while yep. we're here. Right. And then that'll be hopefully the second last milestone. The one after that will be the RTM, will be the wow. final release. So we're close. So close. We're, we're, we're pretty close. Very close. And yeah, I got to tell you, like there's such a buildup to Towards two, like this is going oh, to yeah. be a magic version yeah. of yeah. core. Net standard, bring all the APIs back was yeah. kind of the biggest, the biggest yeah. change we made. Yeah. Well, and, and so there's an argument. This is going to be the lift and shift version, right? That I yeah. open up my 4.7 project. That's the hope. I switch. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, compile. It, everything works because Damien told it me it just works. It just <laughs> works. A step. Wait, Bar Barry said it would work. And Barry said oh, it would work. It's, Barry, it's Barry. a step. It's gonna work. <laughs> and then there are a, a few. Highly used missing pieces uh -oh. that we have committed to porting, and so the big but ones that come up yet. for a lot of our customers: system, drawing. system drawings, system dot directory services. Oh, um, a lot of people require Active Directory yeah. like uh, querying. Um, what was the third one? System runtime caching came system up. System runtime caching object. That's a, that's a fairly straight one to port. Um, um, then there's smaller things like server space, so you can run as a Windows service. Okay, using .NET Core, and then yeah. there's a tail. Those are kind of the big ones. Because now, we, I mean, especially when you talk about the server space, like that's very Windows centric. What's that going to do when I run it in Linux? It wouldn't. So it just wouldn't. These are things where we would port the Windows centric APIs so that they run on .NET Core on Windows. Right. Yeah. But because there are other reasons, like Nano or Windows Nano Server won't run it. Um, won't run it. Like I mean, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it runs .NET Core, so yep. you can. There are some Windows intrinsics still there that you'd want to be able to do things like System Drawing. We will do a cross platform. Have you had version. some time with Nano? Like I find Nano. Mm -hmm. I've, I'm discovering. You know, I thought my app was 64 bit. Then I tried to run it on Nano. I was mistaken because <laughs> <laughs> Nano really only runs. Only runs There's no wow. Yeah. I yeah. found a driver. I found a driver. I didn't even know I was calling. Whoa. That was a 32 bit driver, and so the app just barfs on Nano. And you wouldn't have thunk it. 
You will. Really? Oh, <laughs> save me. I got thunked, <laughs> thunked in public. But in boom. Uh, oh, my goodness. One. It's going to be that kind of show. You like it? that one, huh? You know, it occurs to me we haven't even introduced you guys this That's show. True. Oh, here we are. <laughs> a good 20 minutes oh. in. It's like, if you don't know who Damon and David are, well, <laughs> I'll do it anyway. David Fowler joined Microsoft as a developer on the ASP.NET team in 08. And before that, he did two internships at Microsoft as a tester and developer. He's originally from Barbados and went to college in Florida. And Damian Edwards is a principal program manager on the ASP.NET team responsible for the core ASP.NET runtime and web forms. He's also an active open source participant as the creator of WebForms MVP and SignalR open source ASP.NET projects, as well as various jQuery plugins. Now we know who you are and we can talk. Yeah. Well, I think we're done. Thanks think very much. Hey! <laughs> yeah. I kind of want to change mine. <laughs> I want to change mine, too. It's funny. I, want I, need, to change to, my I need to take time to update mine's, my bio. Mine's too old. Yeah. yeah okay. It's yeah. funny. a long time. It is a long, a long time. time yeah. yeah, you know, you guys were the young new guys at Microsoft. and sort of We the, are now the old man yeah, of ASP.NET. How did that happen? It's funny. That, so funny. Well, that I, freaks me out. You know, I've been, I've been assembling sort of notes around the history of .NET. And yeah. this is, once I got all the timelines together, I realized like October of 2007 is actually where it appears that Scott Guthrie decided that open source was really, really going to mm -hmm. be a thing. Yeah. And that's when MVC dropped and it was going to have an open source license. Yep. Yep. The Ninja Army got hired. Jay Hanselman. Yep. Uh, Connery. Yep. Yep. Block. Yep. Phil, Phil Hack. Hack. Phil yep. Hack. Yeah. Yeah. You guys were Hunter. there. Yeah. Like, it was an army. Yeah. It was a group of people was like that all had sort of open source at their heart. Yep. And it's now we're coming on 10 years, ten years this fall. That's right. right to manifest the truth. <laughs> 10 years That's later, true. like we're here. We're actually here. That's true. Richard Campbell, .NET historian. <laughs> yeah. No, you know what? I'm going to wear That's, that hat yeah. and be totally comfortable with it because I love this story. I think it's wonderful yeah. what we've managed to come to. Mm. Absolutely. You, guys, you look like you're having a blast. It is 10 years. That's amazing. It is 10 years. Yeah. It's yeah, so I think Hunter years. is... is Ten years this year too. Yeah, he's, I'm nine like, he's 2006, so he's oh 11. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's 11 for him. So there's the two other guys on the ASP.NET team is Mike and Alan. Mm -hmm. who are hitting 15 longer. years. Wow, this year we're I'm, celebrating in June. And my boss was was on the ASP.NET team in the very beginning before it was ASP. Scott Goo was his program manager. No, like wow. they were like that together. Wow. That's awesome. You yeah. know, one of the interviews we did earlier this year was with Julia Lucid. Yeah, yeah. who's now a yeah. VP. Oh yeah, yeah. we yeah. never interviewed her before. Yeah, really? it's almost She's embarrassing. She's astonishingly, yeah. and again, twenty five year veteran. Yep. Yep. worked yep. on every single version of Visual Studio ever, ever. made. Yep. now she owns it. Yep, yep. Mm. And just one of those people, you don't see her coming. No, she yeah, knows she was the great. whole story. It was yep. Embarrassing. We never. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. I can't. Yeah, we were embarrassed. Like she should have been on yeah. a show every year. Why? Yeah. Like, like you would talk about someone who's been there and yeah. worked on it nonstop. There's so many good people at Microsoft, and it's hard for I think the rest of the world to see that. Absolutely. You, know, yeah. you, you kind of be. It's easy to be faceless, but you guys have been out there pretty much the whole time. Yeah. Yeah. I think the ASP.NET team in particular, I, for the reasons you just said, like yeah. that, that that wave that started in 2007 has been fairly visible, and we've had Guthrie has always been the type of person who is sort of on stage and visible and a persona yep. And, yep. and as as the head of .NET for such a long time yes, and ASP.NET right. before that I think it's kind of yeah. Phil Hanselman yeah yep. absolutely hey guys hold that thought right there while we take a moment to pay the bills this episode of .NET Rocks is made possible in part by Windows on the Google Cloud platform what? isn't this a .NET show? yeah .NET runs on the Google Cloud platform man everything in .NET? you bet all the .NET Core libraries and more, including 200-plus Google.com and cloud services. Hey, John Skeet's behind it. He's a genius. The John Skeet? The Rescue the Princess John Skeet from Stack Overflow? <laughs> yeah, the one and only. You can deploy your ASP.NET Windows apps to Compute Engine or your ASP.NET Core apps to App Engine or Container Engine, which is Google's hosted Kubernetes environment, and it runs like, well... Google. But what about Visual Studio integration? Oh, it's there. I'm reading it now. You can use Visual Studio to manage your GCP resources and deploy your existing apps. Yep. You can get stack driver logging, error reporting, and tracing support for .NET and .NET Core. Also, there are PowerShell commandlets for GCP, which run on Windows and Linux. And if you need help, there are a great set of partners to get workloads to GCP, including Capgemini, Nudesic, and Magenic. So go to gcp.netrocks.com and get your free trial today. .NET on Google. Who knew? All right, we're back. This is uh, .NET Rocks, Carl Franklin and Richard Campbell, talking with uh, Damian Edwards and David Fowler about uh, Core 2.0. I, I have a question. 
there's, let's talk drama now. Okay. Because, you know, what's a show without drama? <laughs> uh, are there any APIs that you just think might not make it into 2.0? Or are you guys going to wait until everything that you set out to do is done? Or are there, are there any things no, that are going to squeak by? We maybe? just cut a whole crap load of stuff. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, system.web, duh. You did. No, 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 no. But like in, in ASP.NET Core 2, I'm not talking about Net Standard 2. So Net Standard 2 is like, is baked. Like, yeah. so what, what, what is what it's going to be. What is there is what is to. there. And you can go into GitHub and see it. And they're really focusing on the tooling experience for all, that now. So you cut all the security stuff from Barry? He's out. He's out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was specifically Damien, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so we had to make a late call. So we had, we had, so the, the truth is the 2.0 wave in general was started out as being a larger scoped release. Right. And then at some point, the scope was reduced, as often happens in a project. Reality or, yeah, well, intrudes. I think it was it, the directors decided they wanted to a certain time frame, they wanted to focus on a particular thing. Yeah. And so a lot of the scope got cut. The axe came down. And so yeah. we maintain. Well, you got to deliver too. Yeah, right? we got to deliver. Shipping a is a thing, right? Yeah, so a we, we, we were able to maintain some big features in HTML Core. So Razor Pages is re really the really big one, mm -hmm. which yep. I'm very proud of. We can talk about that in a minute. Um, but we had a couple of other fairly big ones. Like the security rewrite was a fairly big deal, but that's going to land okay. Yep. But the identity, there were some identity extensions, identity service, the STS server, those type of things just weren't ready. Like we, I think we, we thought we were going to be okay. And then a, a couple of weeks ago, there was just still too much happening. Right. And it it was more than just that final polish. There was just too many issues being logged with no details and like assigned to the same developer. You have seven things assigned to the same developer the same yeah. day. It's like, I just, yeah, it's like, you know mm. what? We were supposed to be finished last week. Yeah. 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 And, we, yeah. and you can see we, your we miles still, away. We, we I had, still don't know what the new, template will look like. We had new like. designs coming yeah. up in the very like, last week. So we were like, okay, we need to design this new feature for this new thing. And it's right. Like, it's like a week away. It had ripple what effects. What are you talking about design It was one feature. of those things, right? It yeah. had ripple effects. It yeah. was like, Let's wait. Unforeseen. Let's just give it more time and make sure we do it right. And so yeah. we made that cut. And Is yeah. there anything that hasn't been cut that you're still concerned about making, the t making time? Not really anymore. Yeah. Yeah, it Not sounds honestly. like you already had your hard day. That we, was the hard day. We, we pulled a bunch of stuff back that was kind of headed in that direction. Well, it was things that were related to that, I think, yeah. too. They were driven that ripple effect thing, like some yeah. configuration stuff. We, we made some changes in logging that kind of were a bit, of, a bit aggressive. And we kind hmm. of pulled it back a little bit. But we kind of solved all the big ones for, for 2.0. I yeah, think right. overall. I think so. Yeah. We'll so see. It's still right, in good. We caught it in time. We caught it. Can we talk about a little bit the incident that happened a little while ago where suddenly 4.7 wouldn't compile anymore? Or I'd rather not. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was waiting for uh, that. Yeah. I was waiting it for can, that. Is there anything you can say? It was just a mistake. It's not a big deal. Because um, you fixed it pretty quickly. We fixed it fairly quickly. But I you mean, scared the snot out so of a lot of people. Preview 2 will we'll support .NET Framework again. Yeah, that would be Ace nice. Core we like that a lot. Thanks, Ace Ace Two Point Oh. Yeah, the truth is, we had been compiling all the .NET, the ASP.NET Core Two stuff had been compiling against Net Standard, and now we got to about a week before we were going to shut down. It was like two days actually before we were going to shut down Preview One, which we were shipping a build. So we got to like yep. the Thursday, and one of the engineers was tasked with making our music store app run again. It had been turned off for a while right, because right. of some known issues. And he was going to turn it on again and get it working. And part of that was making it work on .NET Core 2 and .NET Framework. Mm. Right. And it didn't work on .NET Framework. And we were like, oh, that's funny. And it turned out a change had been made a few weeks earlier in MVC that effectively broke it on .NET Framework and we didn't know. Oh, I see. And wow. so we, it was the Thursday before build and we had to shut down. Right. Yeah. And we kind of, we could go, make the we could go in one or two, we could go in one or two directions. We could either just ship it like that and have people try and update their apps running on framework. And it wasn't that it failed like when you updated, it failed like at runtime, yeah. like later, it was a horrible experience. Or we could pivot and have it target Netcore directly so that you wouldn't even be able to restore, like you wouldn't be able to upgrade an app to 2.0. We'd just say, no, it's not supported. Right. And so we, we talked about it and we decided to do that. Um, and we knew it was going to, you know, we're like, well, we'll get feedback, you know, because it's not going to work. I think you got some. We got some feedback. <laughs> just yeah. Yeah. And, you know, in feedback. hindsight, yeah. there's some stuff we would, you know, we, if, we'd, if we'd had, if we'd, I don't know, if we'd had more time, we didn't really have a lot of time. It was a very split second thing. We well, had to get and, stuff and done. You know, just probably. as somebody who works with you guys fairly closely, especially yeah. around stuff like Bill, like, Coming in to build is oh. like coming in it's fire. hot. As yeah. hot as Everybody's can. hair is on Talk fire. about a schedule-driven delivery. Like it. You know? it was yeah. a rough week of it, feedback. And it was a, <laughs> uh, for better or worse, it was a tough build. There was yeah. so much yeah. new stuff. Yeah. Everybody was scrambling. Yeah. yeah. 
So anyway, yeah. that's what happened. And that's then, then happened. obviously yeah. being open source, uh, someone in the community saw the commit and kind of we had to scramble and they had logged an issue and then piled on and, yeah, and the usual little you know storm occurred. It went and then crazy. We, whatever. And it's, you know yeah, what? Blew it's over. Yesterday's news now. Yesterday's yeah. news. <laughs> Everybody's got yeah. it. But it's easy to go. This is a conspiracy. But it's fixed now. Yeah. It's fixed now. It and is. as I said, you know, we've committed to... We, we got some good data in terms of like why people... Why you know certain categories of customers aren't ready to move off .NET Framework yet? Sure. And as a result, you know we've Windows the Active Directory stuff we talked about, drawing, yeah. um, and a few other things. We we've got some good data on, so, so we'll, we'll get those done. I can imagine how different that would have been if it had happened in say 2001 or 2002. Wow, it would have been a totally different story, maybe. Well, in 2001, so there was no .NET, but <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, you know, in the early days when a when a bug like that, I mean, it just it just shows how fast you guys move now. Well, I think a lot of it is just how open it is too. Yeah, like yeah. A lot of that stuff, I mean, the truth is before we were open source, stuff like this happened all the time. Right. Just Internally, that no one saw it. Right, it was yeah, all internal. Right. Yeah. And we would change our minds and turn on a dime during release cycles, which tended to be a bit longer back then too. Right, like our, yeah. The yeah. reality is our release cycles are shorter. We do it with less people and we do it in the open. Right. Yeah. And so like, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's harder in three ways, but good, but great. And we love it's it. It's funny because I learned the first .NET was broken into like a bunch of small assemblies. Mm -hmm. So system dot blah was a thing. And apparently the, there was an issue with, with performance. Then they merged it all into system and MS Core Lib. That <laughs> and that all happened during .NET, but no one ever saw it because it was all internal. Right, right. right so sure. like they, they had these like small contracts. And I was like, oh, wow, this happened before. And I never yeah. saw it. Like, Whereas yeah. during yeah. .NET Core, Core no, we're before like, okay. we had .NET Standard, we, we checked had into GitHub and, and everyone's like, like Oh my God! It's on GitHub. What are you doing? <laughs> yeah, stuff. It's like yeah. We have to. We work there, so we have to kind of. I much prefer it this way. Yeah, much yeah. prefer yeah, yeah. it this way. You know, it's funny because Microsoft's tried to make this process. You think about what happened with around Longhorn. Yeah, yep. same sort of thing. They were trying to be yeah. visible and making promises before stuff was baked, mm. and because he because that was what visible looked like, yeah. and it had serious consequences. Didn't go as well, like. Coming into core one, dude, like those, some of those builds, like it was hard. But it was yeah. at least hard. you were there with us yeah. going, yeah, I'm sorry, this is hard. Or the RC1, RC2. That, DNX, pivot, that was the pivot, CLA, right? like, oh, it was yeah. all new. Tough. Man, yeah. Don't Project, standard. Project JSON to CS Proj. Well, that, between the RC1 and RC2, we literally went from DNX and old style TFMs yep. to .NET Core with .NET Standard yep. and a CLI. Yes. Like, and they're like, and Project Jason, and also saying that Project Jason yes. wasn't going to stay around, yeah, and that we were going to move back to CS right So that RC one yeah. to RC two was like the most jarring thing we could have possibly have done, but it was what we had to do at the yeah. time. You know? Yeah, and you did it for the right reasons. We did it for the right reasons, and, and we, you know, the funny, it's in the YouTube videos. You can watch yeah. you guys having yeah. the conversation about, oh man, yeah. we're going to have yeah. to do this. It's just their three hour flipping video. Yeah, that's the funny right. thing is, net standard was called gen generations. Yes, like two years ago and we gave a talk on it at the MVP Summit and ah. it's still like on Channel 9 and I'm like mm -hmm. wow this is a long uh, time ago yeah cool hey Richard yeah buddy guess what time it is uh, now it must be that happy time again oh you know exactly what time it is I do it's time to allow David to respond to Barry Dorrance by throwing him under the bus <laughs> and <laughs> go <laughs> the dump. <laughs> I know you weren't here, but Barry <laughs> talked some serious smack about well, you. I think he did. Deep down, he said, you know, if you really want to understand his security, you should talk to David Fowler because he's the man. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I think that's how I interpreted it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but we had been feeding Barry Scotch at that point. So. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's actually time to give away a DevExpress D Experience subscription to one lucky member of the .NET Rocks fan club and become a UI superhero with DevExpress UI controls and libraries and deliver elegant .NET solutions that address customer needs today and leverage your existing knowledge to build next-generation touch-enabled solutions for tomorrow. Whether it's an Office-inspired application or a data-centric analytics dashboard, DevExpress Universal ships with everything you'll need to build your best without limits or compromise. And check out their new Dev Extreme React Grid, built from the ground up to fully support all the cool features that come with React, like the virtual DOM, state controllers like Redux and all that, and supports master detail, sorting, grouping, paging, and editing. You can check it out and test it for free by getting it from GitHub. Learn more and download your free 30-day trial of DevExpress Universal at devexpress.com slash superhero. All right, buddy, who's our winner? Today's winner is Ralph Compton. Congratulations, Yay. Ralph. Yay. Oh, Yay. Yep. 
and he just won the uh, Dev Express D Experience subscription, a big pile of awesome for my friends over there, just for being a member of the .NET Rocks fan club. And if you don't know what that is, go to .NET Rocks.com, click on the big Get Free Stuff button, answer a few questions, and join the fan club. We have thousands of members all over the world, and every show we like to give away stuff from our sponsors, and every December we give away a $5,000 technology shopping spree to one lucky member of the fan club. But this year, instead, we're going to give away this little Channel 9 guy. <laughs> 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 Worth somewhat less than $5,000. Yeah. Maybe Actually, that's just me. Maybe we'll, we'll give him some more hair first. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we like to ask our guests, you guys, uh, if you had $5,000 to spend, David, on technology right now, what would you buy? A new giant TV from my man cave. How giant are we talking here? <laughs> like five grand, you can get like a eighty inch TV. The eighty OLED, yeah, right? Well, the good it, Samsung. Now, you, if you got a uh, what was it, a, a Surface Hub, would that oh double my as a TV? No, yes. not with five grand, could it? Yeah, it's not going to be five grand for the little awesome. one. <laughs> <laughs> the small Surface Hub, yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's a forty-two or forty-seven for, for the, the small, small one. Yes. That's about five grand. We have one of those in our conference. The big one's like eighteen. Yeah. Wow. It's yeah. big. <laughs> it's really big. big. It's 84 inches, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. So they were, if, you, if you run it at 640 by 480, the icons are bigger than your head. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> uh, what about you, Damien? What would you uh, buy? Probably speakers. I just got a new amp. My 20-year-old okay. Marant Slimline died finally a couple oh. of weeks ago, yeah. which is great because I haven't had any decent... I haven't had surround sound for 18 years. I have my, a tough I was all time digital spending big money on speakers because you know there are plenty of two hundred dollars speakers that are just simply outstanding. It's true, and Good enough, but yeah. I need nine of them. Yeah, all right. Okay. So there's like, a couple of grand. Yeah, so there's a couple <laughs> of grand. So I've got my eyes some kefs at the moment, and I need like two main front, a center, two back, a subwoofer, and four in the ceiling. There you go to fully kit out. Yeah, okay, you get and there. So I'm getting close. Right? Awesome. Not quite to five grand, but do you close. have a nice room like with sound treatment? To David's put it in? been in the room. Yeah, it's nice. It hasn't. It doesn't have the sound treatment, but okay. it's a nice room. I I'd do that before I'd spend money on speakers. Uh, yeah, it's, you it's know what? Fun. Yeah, save really? a little money. It's for really? his, it's for his Nest Classic though. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's so super Mario. Mario, Mario so like really, really good. <laughs> but, you, <laughs> but you know, Ethan Weiner's, those little baffles in the yeah, corners. Real like, traps. The, real traps. They're not a lot of money. Mm. It is stunning what they do to it. Really? And, and so you send hold, me a link? You hold back a, a, a thousand or so of that uh -huh. and put a couple of traps in some corners, mm. the room Actually, transforms. Actually, I can oh, give really? you the secret, the audio secret that nobody wants me to tell you. Fiberglass compressed two-inch fiberglass is better at sound absorption than the professional foam. Yeah, see, are. I'm not covering my media room. You don't in, have to. No, no, but what you that. do is you do you do burlap around it and in hot glue gun. Yeah. And now you basically just hang these on the ceiling, oh. in the corners, oh. all oh. the walls, oh. Find an artist to actually paint on them I and you see. can yeah. turn it into some art. And Interesting. And it so, really works. Okay. Uh, my When I had to rebuild my office, which yeah. is still not entirely finished, and the funny thing is when I built my office, I wasn't a podcaster, and I've been a podcaster for a long time. It shows how old the office is. Yeah. Uh, I ended up taking one of those panels, a, f a four by two panel, and making a light fixture out of it mm, and nice. hanging it in the center of my ceiling. Perfect. And it just flattened the room. Yeah. Like, wow. All of Whoa. a sudden, because that's where the sound bounces yeah. off of and goes everywhere else. So here's this chunk in the center that just is a noise eater. And hang it down about six inches from the, okay. from the, uh, from top the, ceiling. Of the ceiling. And then you get the on top of it as well. Interesting. Waves bounce up and they don't come down. So like, given the in ceiling, so I want to get Atmos working eventually. So right. I either have to do bounce off the ceiling or do project from Drip the ceiling. There, yeah. Yeah. And so projecting from the ceiling ultimately is better, yeah. but is a lot more complicated <laughs> in terms of wiring and all that other stuff. But, but I think uh, it's really interesting to think in terms of if you really want to shape sound, yeah. save a little budget for sound damage. It makes too. such a difference. And you're going to spend yeah. thousands on speakers. You, you want to spend a few interesting. hundred. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Interesting. Really great speakers are down stuff. low and sound great. Anything yeah. sounds good when you turn it up. Sure. I see. Not that we're opinionated right No. <laughs> 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 Oh, guys, where do we go next? Is this, I mean, I'm so stoked about Core 2, but there's, there is a ton to talk about. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, we got the Razor Pages in ASP.NET Core 2. Yeah, let's That's go down the Razor line. Baby. That's my baby. Yeah, okay, so you're biased here. Because Super there's a, biased. There's a non-group <laughs> of people who go, why would I ever use this? Right. Because serving HTML from MVC never felt natural to me. Hmm. Hmm. And so there's a lot of fantastic stuff in the MVC system for building forms and building like pages that humans look at, right, right. in browsers. Mm. But there's a lot of ceremony and a, separ a lot of separation that feels unnatural. 
when it comes to saying, well, routes are in one place, they go to controllers or yeah. actions that live on controllers in another place. Yep. Right. Then they return views that live in yet another place mm -hmm. with many levels of nesting and things like that as well. And you need all to do all of that just to get Hello World to work. Right. Yep. And so there's a lot of opinions, a lot of concepts and et cetera, et cetera. Whereas when you just want to build a page that is looked at by a, a person in a browser, it's nice to just be able to create a file that the name of the file becomes the URL that right. they go to. You can keep all the separation. You can keep all the, the code-based separation that you want to get testability and yeah, dependency testability, injection yeah. and all that type of stuff. You can do all that and still keep it page-focused. We built Razor Pages into MVC. It's not separate. It's part of MVC. Right. And so it uses all the same primitives. And where we built new things, we made them work in MVC as well. Nice. Yeah. And so we looked at the page-focused way of programming with forms and post-redirect get and all the type of you know, URL generation based on routes. We looked at all those things. And we said, let's build a framework that's page-focused based on that. Yeah. Yeah. So think, that's what we yeah. ended up with. I think one big thing too is that you don't have to create a view model anymore. Mm -hmm. Your page model is the view model. Right. right. So you have a page code behind, if you, if you will, and a razor page in front, and you just add properties to your, to your page model, and that becomes visible in your view without having to like yeah. have data, create a view model, pass it to return view, blah, 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 blah. So it feels like, it feels like very tight. Yeah. Yeah. It feels very tight when you're yeah. using pages, right? right. Yeah. Who's responsible for, and, and this is a good thing, who's responsible for declarative routing? Uh, the uh, attribute routing? Web yeah. API. That's routing Web attributes. API. It's one no, of my no, favorite oh things. No. Who? Oh, person. who? Who's the person in I don't know. I would guess Glenn Block. I guess? I, if, All I, right. if I had to take a guess. Hey, <laughs> Glenn. Doesn't even work for the company anymore. <laughs> it's probably Glenn. I, I don't that, know. He's very subdued these days. That yeah. was like, yes. when I learned about that, I was like, okay, now, I'm, now I can actually use this. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Routing I agree. The first version was called URI Template. Yeah, it's and right. it was, well, and I think it, I it think was like WCF, right? Yeah. Because yeah. it was the WCF REST services. Yeah, exactly. And then it came, it came from, from there, from. and then it... Yeah, so thank you, Glenn. Super nice, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Somebody, so I presume somebody's taken that over, and now that Glenn's off on other things. Yeah, well, we, it's just part we of the internet now. Right. It's all yeah. part yeah. of our stuff. But it's funny, you talk about routing. Like, we've been having a discussion this week about the future of stuff in ASP.NET Core beyond 2.0. Right. And one of the things that's come up is... Why isn't routing just everywhere? Like, right. sure. why, why, but why, why, why do we even have MVC? It like, should be why is, why yeah. is there a thing called MVC? It's sure. just ASP.NET Core. Yeah. yeah. And wouldn't it be like when you build middleware today, it's all functions in an HTTP context, yeah. which is great until you want to return something. And then you've got a stream. It's like, well, write to the stream, turn it into bytes. Like, it's not particularly useful or, yeah. or productive. Right. Um, what most people want to be able to do is just return an action result, return a view, return sure. a file, return a thing. So we kind of, we're thinking about how we could bake those intrinsics further down. What if routing was global, and right. so anyone in the app could ask the route table to generate them a URL? Right. Yeah, or sure. Or give me the list else, of all right? of yeah. them, right? Yep. And make um, it as easy as an attribute. And make yes, it exactly. make it as easy. So you just have a class with attributes on it, and it's now like a controller. Perfect. You know? Yeah, so we're thinking about things like that for post 2.0, and then extending that to everywhere. Like model binding isn't just useful to MVC. We have no. a similar concept in SignalR. Mm -hmm. I'd hate to duplicate stuff. Right. And if you just have classes that have action methods on them, it'd be nice to be able to bind complex types into those if you want to. So why isn't model binding available everywhere? Yeah. And then trying to relayer the system moving forward to make it more, to have some of those intrinsics be more core, and then mm. you opt into them when you need them. Right. It's something we're kind of thinking about for the future. So. Uh, and, uh, just to dive a little more meta yeah. on this, like it's got to be kind of fun when you get to a place where you have to talk about after two because you've yeah. been all about yeah. two for a while. Were there, were there things early on where it's like, this is not going to make two, so we'll put this aside so we can talk about two next? So I gave an entire talk. Did you really? This week. On, on just random ideas that were kind of post tool. Nothing concrete. It was all like, oh no, this is all voodoo. Here are these, right. here are what these if? 17 things that I think we could possibly do in the future. Right. And they're maybe kind of crazy, but they're kind of ideas that are interesting to look at, right? Like so better what APIs. Got, what got the biggest applause? <laughs> what got the biggest applause? Maybe performance was a big one. Performance. Oh, and wait. Well, that's sort of a safe yeah, bet, Yeah, new transports. Yeah, safe bet, right? Um, Nobody yeah. says, for the next version, please. <laughs> yeah, Could you make down. it slower? Because I'd really... <laughs> exactly. It's way too fast right now. Non-HTTP <laughs> stuff was pretty... Was, yeah. <laughs> uh, the um, non-HTTP stuff for, for Signal was a pretty, a pretty good that's one. That's really interesting. Like, yeah. I have never thought about that, but I totally get it. Because it's, it's, it's basically a new WCF, if you think about it, right? It's, it's basically a, yeah. a WCF without still. Yeah, what does post WCF right. look like? Exactly. It's right. RPC, yeah. but RPC, you want streaming as well, and you want flexible transport. But if you're really yeah. going to talk about WCF, like, give me transactional boundaries. Yeah, no. No. Well, and this is a, you know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah. don't say WCF yeah, to so me then, not right? Not WCF then. <laughs> yeah, because when I think about it, I think about those kinds yeah. of enterprise-y yeah, rules. Some we people, mean the some bit people the think about, Some right. people think about IPC. 
and service contract and having a mm. ad, ad reference to, and getting a, a proxy on right. right. C sharp. So an abstraction to your for, communication. Yeah. Exactly. Yes, right. yeah. And that's yeah. okay. Yeah. 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 yeah no, I, t I totally get Opinionated that. Opinionated remote API framework. Yeah. Like that type Good. of thing. I like right? it. Yeah. 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 Um, other things? R A F. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, oh, we should, we should, we should call or it that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It yeah. sounds like oh, I showed. Rap. I showed one more thing that was kind of super crazy that Damien loved oh. or, or hated. I can't tell. Um, and, and it was called TS HTML. TS. Yeah, because because I spent we, we spent the the art. Does TS the, stand for terribly sexy? Is uh, that what that is? <laughs> yes, actually. <laughs> How did you did you see my no. I, just, I got it just like that. Type script HTML. Oh, so oh. We spent the last two days in the workshop building an application that was a, called a, a conference planner. Mm -hmm. We took the NDC data, we put it into our database, and, and we had an API app and a front end application in um, in Razor Pages. And I was like, what if we made Razor Pages be available in, in the, on the client on the client? Right. Could it be just like Razor Pages but for with, with TypeScript? Mm -hmm. And I kind of just showed like a what a page would look like, and people were like, "Oh, yeah, interesting." You're, you're kind of encroaching an Angular space. There. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, right? and, and then Steve and Sanderson and blew you out of the water. And, and then oh. Steve oh. Sanderson showed a demo. Did Don't, you guys see yeah, this? Watch talk? out for the knockout guy. That yeah. guy knows some okay. stuff. Oh man. Okay, like, <laughs> did you guys see what he showed? No. no. He took theory that people had spoken about and just like in ten days, he did it. Implemented. It. Made he it did work. it. And you know, he is so freaking humble. Too. It's yeah. Just, yeah. He keeps. He, but he is a wizard. He sat down and he was. Was like, wasn't that hard? <laughs> <laughs> and I sat there with my he brain. He legit went quiet. My brain for I like was ten like, minutes with oh, his head in his hands. Wow. He was just like, I said to him yeah, last night on the cruise. I like sure. Steve. You realize like you started all that stuff, yeah, right? Dude. I mean, knockout. He goes, no. Well, you know, they yeah, were doing that yeah. in Silverlight, and I'm like, yeah, but not on the web. Yeah. <laughs> he said, oh, you, yeah. You need an installation on the machine? No, 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 we don't need that. We'll just do it in the DOM. It'll be fine. So Steve showed. In his talk, WebAssembly, running C Sharp in the browser, like working end to end. What? Yes. End to end. Yes. Wow. Oh my goodness. So he found an abandoned .NET runtime implementation on GitHub called .NET Anywhere that I've never heard of. I don't know if you've heard of it. I'm looking it up right now. <laughs> so some <laughs> people the show wrote notes. their own .NET runtime in C, oh. and then he compiled that using to WebAssembly. Using M scripting. Using M scripting. Compiled it oh. into Web. And into then he used the .NET Core C Sharp compiler and the .NET Core Razor, like verbatim, he just took them, tweaked it a bit, and built a framework. And so that's that tweaked it a bit part that I'm yeah, really he interested wrote some, in. He tweaked it some a glue. lot. So he wrote yeah. some glue. He got right. a glue bottle it, out. It and just downloads made, assemblies I, I, from I like... I think before <laughs> we get too excited, yeah. you really have to tell our listeners what WebAssembly <laughs> is because it's been a... I think we've mentioned it once in the right. history yeah, of yeah, our yeah. show. WebAssembly is basically a... Think of it as a subset, of, a subset of JavaScript. Take JavaScript as you know it. It's a bytecode format right? for the web. And then you take a subset of it and then you say, let's not only take a subset of the API, but let's allow you to transfer it pre-compiled effectively, rather than it being text that gets parsed in the browser. It's a binary we run format. It through a, yeah, it's a binary yeah. format. We run it through a compiler. We get, send it down like bytecode, like Java bytecode or IL yeah. or something like that. And then the browser natively can run it, interpret it. And it's safe because it's all a standard in the web browser. Sure. This was very much driven by the Mozilla folks. That yeah, it was. Yeah. Absolutely. And originally it was kind of penned as... Asm.js uh, yeah. was the first version of it. And then yeah. they yeah. made it a real thing, right? right. And then they did like Quake was running in the browser, right? So yeah. the, idea is essentially, the idea is essentially that why do we? Why are we allowing everybody to view source, yeah. right? Is that it? You well, I don't it's, know if it's about it's the more, view. It's about speed. Yeah. More it's than more, anything. Why are so we forcing everybody to compile everything every time? That. Ah. Scott Hasman wrote a blog post like years ago saying JavaScript is the, the assembly, assembly language. Language. of the inter in internet. Right, yeah. And that was the case. So you yeah. have like, people compliant to JavaScript. And so now... Let's ship microcode. Yeah. Rather than... Bypass assembly. that, right? And yeah. make it more efficient. Got and it. So, but because the compiler tool chain that produces it supports C++, you can just take C++ code and, and compile it to WebAssembly. Web assembly. And so then you can take... Think about I what's I written in C++. chills when you say yeah. that out so loud. Then you think about what's written in C++ and you yeah. go... Everything. Oh, everything. The <laughs> runtime is written in C++ <laughs> and C. Like, and you go, oh, well, let's just... And Mr. Sanderson just tweaked it a little. Yeah, so my, so my brain melted because he, he literally had the JIT and the GC. Like, there's two. There's JavaScript, like, from V8, and there's, like, .NET. This main .NET running in the browser, right. like, side by side. Oh 300 kilobytes. <laughs> 300 time. kilobytes. And it was time. small. Yeah. And it was tiny. <sighs> that wasn't that hard. Was <laughs> and he was, like... I mean, he said, he admitted, he's standing on the shoulders of giants, and yeah. he's, yeah, like... He took a, a bunch of stuff. We say, like, why did you do this? He's, like, 
I thought it'd be a cool demo. So I, <laughs> I didn't know anything about it. I thought it'd be a cool demo. So then I just went looking. I was, I was going to skip over that bit where I derailed the universe. <laughs> I say, I, a black hole appeared on the table that in front guy, of you. All everything. And it, and it every does, time. And he borrows time. some React concepts. So it does like very efficient DOM, DOM updating updates. and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's... So yeah. the oh potential is is enormous. Yeah, no so kidding. that that's um I that, oh, was super interesting. I'm gonna go Let's and say sleep that. tonight super and just my brain is just on fire. Oh, so, wow. about it. so would Barry Dorns approve of that? I mean, is it safe? Well, oh, it's Barry would Barry approve approves of anything. Very little. Yeah. Very little. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Except yeah. for binary uh, serialization. Yeah. Oh, he loves that <laughs> binary <laughs> serialization. Secure string. He loves secure string. string. He loves secure string. He loves secure string. He was all about the view state. He was that guy. Gotcha. Oh my goodness. Oh, man. So yeah, that was impressive. Yeah, oh, no that kidding. Was pretty cool. Yeah. I, I still want to jump back to this, you know, .NET Core next. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, obviously, yeah, and I, I'm yeah. really appreciative of your big concept ideas, David. Yeah. That, you know, early on got cut because you're delusional, <laughs> and, and okay, we'll revisit these and say no again in the next yep. version. And then there's obviously stuff as you finally have to lock down. Yes. It's yep. like those you are cut. great ideas. They'll we'll push them out. Yeah. But then I guess I think you also have to wait until. It's sort of out in the wild, and what did we miss? What's a whole? Of course. What takes priority? Yeah. That sort of composes the next version. Yeah. So you have wild-eyed, didn't make it, and oops, we forgot it. Yep. That's product planning in a nutshell. Right there. Right. Yep. <laughs> and that's that's kind of the job of people that's like me job. and the other you know the other PMs in the Our group job, is looking at the product overall and making the choices. Or, do, a setting direction. I think it's one of the reasons you two sit together so well. Idealist. Pragmatist. Let's be ideal. We, we, yeah. that, that you just want the world. That's You're right. very pragmatic. I do want the world. Yes. David wants the world. world. Damien dials uh, it down. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think to be fair, that hat goes back and forth depending on what we're talking about. Sure, and like sure. We go through phases, and yeah. sometimes I want Everybody's everything in an area. At some point, yeah. Right? And I'm okay. like, why can't we just have it be like this? And he's yeah. like, well. Layering and da 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 da. Unless like, Steve Sanderson works on it, not possible. Not on, not possible. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but yeah, I mean that's that's product planning. Like we mm -hmm. have to look at the big picture and and make hard choices and figure out what. And sometimes we go deep into something and realize we were wrong, and you have to yeah. pull out again. So I can't imagine. No. no, 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 no. Are you guys ever wrong? Well, I'm never no. wrong. It's just awesome, awesome, just awesome. wrong timing. <laughs> Followed it's, by it's awesome. It's always wrong Bad timing. timing. Yeah. Yeah. Is it too early? Is all too early? Yeah. It's a you know it's funny how much time. of it it really is timing. It right? is. Like there's a big part of product planning that absolutely goes into that. I totally. Totally agree. So, anything you want to hint at in terms of a time frame or? Well, so I mean, I think I already said 2.0. We're already shutting down now. I think you'll see you know, mid-year Q3, Q3? Yeah. Early, early Q3. Okay, I think yeah. you'll see it land, and then 2.1 would be towards the end of the year. I like hope. that you even admit there is a 2.1. Not just go straight to three. Like, well, no, no, well, who knows, right? You don't want to do 2.1 SP1. No, oh, wait, 2.1 well, CTB1.2. Well, who would do that? <laughs> Nobody does that. <laughs> So this show is coming out August 29th. Think oh, really? By then, it might be done by then. Actually, I hope so. It might be done by then. Actually. I hope so. Maybe, done by maybe then. possibly. I would uh, hope it's been done by then. In oh, which no, case, everything we just talked about is wrong, and we're really sorry. No, no, this, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's I hope that's wrong. This one is coming out earlier than that. No, okay. this is coming out July, July 25th. 25th. Then yeah. no, you no I, I bumped you guys up early. Yeah, you, you're not you can't have there. It I know that much. much. It's, it, it's getting close though, and I think I mean, but for 2.1, there's already things that we know we want to do. So well, on their core, got Signal is a big one. You know, I'm, I'm collaborating with you guys uh, around .NET Conf, yep. which is the the week of September 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. We're going to be in Stockholm yep. doing a live show that's oh, going nice. to end with the keynote with Mr. Hunter and Mads Torgensen to talk about all the core two wonders. Oh, well, nice. And see and the latest incarnation of C Sharp. Then it goes straight into the live stream. So what I, what you're telling me is we have to be done by September. Yeah. If you're not done by September, <laughs> okay. I know where you live, man. Okay. Uh, Don't wreck my that's show. Where my brain goes. <laughs> we'll be very grumpy. Right. Awesome, guys. Uh, <laughs> thanks for hanging out with us. It's always thanks, good guys. to just shoot it. You Thank know. you. A uh, ton of fun, my friend. Great. Cheers. Absolutely. All right. And we'll see you next time on .NET Rocks. .NET Rocks is brought to you by Franklin's Net and produced by Plop Studios a full-service audio, video, and post-production facility located physically in New London, Connecticut, and, of course, in the cloud. Online at pwop.com. Visit our website at dotnetrocks.com for RSS feeds, downloads, mobile apps, comments, and access to the full archives going back to show number one 
recorded in September 2002. And make sure you check out our sponsors. They keep us in business. Now go write some code. See you next time. Got a transmitter band by the FCC. Yes, I'm a...